Jack, you've heard the saying, there's no place like home. But for Native Hawaiians, home is becoming increasingly a pricey proposition. So much so, many are being forced to leave the place they love. Some have found a community and purpose thousands of miles away. Others have tried but found themselves missing their home too much to stay away. Our team traveled thousands of miles to bring us this story tonight, and Eva Pilgrim has the in-depth report. I grew up in Kahalu'u O'ahu, Hawaii. Um, Ko'olau Poko is the mountain range. Mololani is the name of our winds. Apuakea is the name of our rain. Um, getting emotional because that's where my feet ran free. I can smell it. I can hear it. I hear the streams at night. I can feel the winds of where I grew up. Aina is a word that flows deep through the veins of Hawaiian culture. It means love of the land, founded on the sense we are all connected as living things. Bred from the sprawling sandy beaches along crisp blue shores to the misty mountaintops dotted along the islands, here in paradise, there is immense respect for both the land and the sea, honored for providing and sustaining life. And the hula dance tells the love story of it all. In this hula kahiko, it's very solemn. We're trying to express, we do whatever is necessary to protect our islands and our people, yeah? But the beautiful landscape of Hawaii is a dwindling option for many natives who have called it home for generations. Here, they dance. Not in Hawaii, but nearly 3,000 miles away in the continental U.S. Four more. Las Vegas is home to one of the largest Hawaiian communities outside of the island itself. Nearly half of all Good. native Hawaiians have had to move away from Hawaii. A lot of people who have chosen to move away from our island homes, majority of them is priced out of paradise. It's very difficult to have a comfortable lifestyle. When we actually bought our house in 2020, we're the first on both sides of our families to ever own something. And for many who move away from Hawaii, it's that mindset to kind of break that generational trauma of my parents never owned, so I would never be able to own. And we knew that we wanted to be that, like, break. The decision to leave not just paradise, but home. Behind closed doors, I would ball my eyes out. I would want to move them back home. When we decided to move, it definitely was not a unanimous decision. Ready? When we first got here, it was so hard as a parent. I mean, he would cry. He struggled finding his place here and understanding what it meant to grow up in a landlocked city. Like, he could not conceptualize. As a parent, to see and watch your child feel so displaced because of something out of your control, it's so heartbreaking. There's different thoughts, right? Like, we're cowards because we left, we didn't fight for it. But it definitely is very upsetting to hear of how many Hawaiians are displaced from our home, you know, and that I'm one of them. In Oahu, 30 minutes outside of Honolulu, the asking price of this home is over $1 million. That price simply is not affordable for many native Hawaiians. Most of the folks that really want to stay, they always want to build their own families within the culture of Hawaii. And it's just going to be a, you know, living paycheck to paycheck. And it's a very hard lifestyle. Most of the native Hawaiians looking to move to Vegas are first time buyers hoping to give their kids and their parents a better life. They want to give back to their parents. Even it means that they have to come and live in Las Vegas with me, but at least I can give them 
a better quality of life. I, I can take care of paying for everything now with my job. So it is a good situation, but it is sad. Governor Josh Green says keeping Hawaii accessible to those who've lived on this land for generations is important. My wife, who's native Hawaiian and Japanese, grew up in Kaneohe. My children are part native Hawaiian, so I'm already anticipating how it will affect all of our families, including my own. But Hawaii is the most expensive state to live in in the United States. The cost of living is 86% higher than the national average, with the cost of housing an astounding 207% higher than the national average. We don't want any out migration. We need our young people to stay. We're working on economic development. We're working on making Hawaii the most diverse place in the world, which it is actually. It's just too expensive for many people. Efforts to protect Hawaiians date back over 100 years. In 1920, the federal government set aside 200,000 acres of former lands owned by the royal family and the state for native Hawaiians. All because the then Hawaiian prince, Jonah Kahio Kalanianeole, wrote to the U.S. Senate that the only way to rehabilitate the race was to place them back upon the soil. Fast forward to today and those 200,000 acres are still being doled out by the government in a program called the Hawaiian Homelands. Some islands like Oahu have a 30,000 person wait list. Aloha, welcome to the Anahola Marketplace. I live here in Anahola with my beautiful home because of the Hawaiian Homelands. We have a um, barbecue pit where we have a vendor doing huli huli chicken. Kipukai Kuwali is chair of the Sovereign Council of Hawaiian Homestead Association on the island of Kauai. He waited decades to be awarded a plot of land. We get the land for dollar a year for 99 years, and it can be extended for another 99 years. People are frustrated with the wait, knowing that it might take 20 to 30 years. Even still, these homesteads aren't an option for most natives because of a strict rule, the blood quantum level. There are a lot of 25% quarter Hawaiians out there that wish they could be part of this land program, but they cannot. It'll literally take an act of Congress. Governor Green acknowledges the homestead process needs to be expedited. We have $600 million to build 4,000 houses right away. It's critical because we're trying to right wrongs of the past. If you own a second home here in Hawaii, please rent it to a local family who's in the tourism industry, in the healthcare industry, who's a teacher. You'll be helping us. I was looking for these clothes. Did you see these pens? On the windward side of Oahu, Molly is currently raising her family of five in a two-bedroom apartment in the small town of Kaneohe. Her husband, Kiola, is 50% Hawaiian and qualifies for homestead housing. His father died while on the wait list and hopes that with recent reforms, his family may still have a chance. To be on that list, you gotta have a certain amount of Hawaiian blood in you. And here, it's a, it's a dying race. You know, it's, which it's crazy to think about. You can't find 50% Hawaiian out here. Molly and Keola grew up in the same town as CC. We live in Kaneohe, it's another city on the island of Oahu. Um, I was born here, raised in Kahuku. There's just something about when you grow up in Hawaii, when you're raised here, it's just the connections that you make with your people. Our families have been here for years and there's a lot of roots and that is one thing that people sacrifice when they leave. One of the things you wanna do right when you come home, go to the beach because the water is always a connection with Hawaii, you know? It is more than paradise here. It really is because we live the real life of living here. It's beautiful, but have you seen what a gallon of milk is? It's like $10. She was inspired to move to Las Vegas, also known as the Ninth Island, in hopes for a better life for their family. They call it the Ninth Island. It was a nice stepping stone for us because we knew that it wouldn't be a huge culture shock. Like, the food is still there, the Hawaiian activities, the people. 
here, CC's Hawaiian spirit is strong despite not being on the island. The community becoming her ohana, Hawaiian for family. Most of us miss home, but to be really content, I've created something really special for our family. Kamaehu said, you know what you're doing, mom, right? And I said, what am I doing? He said, you're creating your Hawaii. I literally broke down in tears one time because I guess that's what I'm doing. But as similar as it could be for Molly, it just wasn't home. The moment that we realized that we needed to go home, it was slowly creeping up on us. So I left with two kids. I came home with one more. I just started to think about just having a baby in Hawaii, the family, the culture, the love and support. After just two years, she was ready to rejoin the Aina. Trading in her five bedroom single family home in Nevada to return to the island. Leaving was bittersweet because we had the home that you picture yourself living in when you move to the mainland. And now we live in a two bedroom apartment with five of us and we're happy. When I got off that plane with the kids and I was home, like my heart felt good. I said, we experienced Vegas, we experienced something new, but raising baby and bringing the family home was important, yeah. Hi everyone, George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.